adding the all-pass filtered signal to the original input signal. And let's check the frequency response back in Plugin Doctor. Well, would you look at that? We've created a low-pass filter. If we can selectively shift the phase of certain frequencies with an all-pass filter, it's then just a matter of simple arithmetic to derive all the standard EQ-type filters from that. EQ doesn't cause phase shift. Phase shift causes EQ. I really like Dan's video. It takes me back to when I was at university almost 20 years ago now. And I used to do the same kind of thing, trying to understand a more complex thing by recreating it with more simple building blocks. And I was doing all that stuff in Reactor and Max MSP and Pure Data. I'm sure the software looks really different nowadays. And although I pretty much agree with Dan's video, I think there's a tiny bit more that can be said on this topic. If someone put me on the spot and asked what causes EQ, I probably wouldn't say phase shift or all pass filters. I'd probably say reactants. And without reactants, we wouldn't have analog EQ, compressors, gates, condenser microphones, or pretty much most of the equipment that you have in a decent recording studio. So I like Dan's video, but he says in it that you can take an all-pass filter and derive a low-pass filter from it and a whole bunch of other shapes, which he goes on to demonstrate. However, here's an all-pass filter. Can you spot a contradiction with that? Let me give you a hand. That is a low-pass filter. So there's a low-pass filter in the all-pass filter. It's created with a low-pass filter. So yes, you can derive a low-pass filter from an all-pass filter, but it's sort of saying like, you can derive sand from a sand castle. <laughs> There's already a low-pass filter in there. And yes, there are other ways that we can make all-pass filters using inductors and capacitors in weird sort of lattice shapes and all sorts of configurations. But the classic way that you make an all-pass filter is like this, and it contains a low-pass filter already. But that's a bit of a nitpick. To be charitable to the original video, the idea was how we can make all this different EQ just from the concept of phase shift alone. And I 100% agree with that. But that's why I think we should look more closely at reactants to understand how phase shift works. As far as I'm concerned, reactants is one of the most important concepts in analog signal processing. And the same concepts sort of translate quite quite well to digital processing as well. And besides, it's too much of a good opportunity to miss to geek out on one of these more complex topics. So let's get into it now. So there's two flavors of reactants, capacitive and inductive. And most manufacturers moved away from inductors as quickly as they could because capacitors are cheaper, they have less parasitic, so less interference and noise in the circuits. So where possible, most manufacturers use capacitors and not inductors, apart from speciality manufacturers like Manly, who want additional parasitics in the circuit for vibe characteristics and stuff. So we're just gonna be talking about in this video, capacitors, because most people are using, that's the most classic thing that we're gonna be using in circuits is capacitor rather than inductor. A capacitor works a tiny bit like a battery. When you plug in your phone to charge it, current flows from the charger into your phone and charges the battery. But when it gets to 100% and your phone is charged, it doesn't continue charging it, it's charged and it stops charging. That's just like a capacitor. You can charge it up and once it's reached 100% charge, it won't charge anymore it will just stop and the current will stop flowing in the circuit. And of course, if you unplug your phone, the battery will go down until it runs out. And that's just the same as a capacitor. If there's no current flowing into it, the charge will just drain over time. So if you give a capacitor voltage, it will just go up until it's fully charged and then stop and no more current will flow. So it blocks DC because if you give it DC, current will stop flowing. If you turn off the current, then it will discharge. And as you can see, you could just turn the current on and off, on and off and toggle it and get some movement. Or if we give it a sine wave, you will see that it will go up and down. So AC can travel through the capacitor, but DC is blocked. That's the important thing to know about capacitor. The next thing is, it charges when you give it DC current, but how quickly does it charge? Well, we can alter the speed of it. We can have it charging really slowly, or we can have it charging much quicker. And the way that we regulate this is using a resistor. Let's look at a low pass filter. It's just a resistor and a capacitor. And you see the resistor is resisting the flow of current and slowing down the charging into that capacitor. So using a higher value resistor slows down the speed at which the capacitor charges. Think of electricity flowing a bit like water flowing. If you impede the flow of water, then the water will flow slower. With a higher impedance resistor, it charges slower. With a lower impedance resistor, it charges quicker. 
But where is it flowing to? So it goes across the resistor and then goes to a triangle, which means the ground. Anything that goes to ground is sort of like chucking it in the bin. It goes to zero volts. And remember, capacitors block DC current, but let higher frequencies go through. So what's happening here? Well, the higher frequencies are going through that capacitor and going to ground and getting chucked away. So we're chucking away our higher frequencies. So this is a low pass filter because we're keeping the lows and chucking away the highs. So this low pass filter forms part of our all pass filter and I'll explain how that works in a second. But you know how I said that a capacitor blocks DC and lets the high frequencies through? Well, which high frequencies? Of course, a low pass filter has a cutoff. The cutoff is the frequency at which lower frequencies are blocked by the capacitor and higher frequencies are passed by the capacitor. And we can just use a super basic calculator to calculate the resistor impedance and the capacitor capacitance and figure out what the cutoff frequency will be. Let's say that you've got a sine wave. If the rise time of your sine wave is slower than the charge time of your capacitor, it will be blocked. If the rise time is faster than the charge time, then it will be passed. And if it's the same, then it's gonna be at the cutoff frequency which means it will have around 3 dB of attenuation. If we've got a high frequency, it's gonna pass and then go to ground. This essentially creates a short circuit for high frequencies and the current is shunted away from the non-inverting input of the op amp. So where does the current flow? It flows to the inverting input of the op amp and the polarity is flipped. So it's 180 degrees out of phase. Whereas at low frequencies, that capacitor will block the path to ground. So the voltage will make it to the non-inverting input of the op amp. And the circuit behaves like a non-inverting op amp buffer, which just means it amplifies the input signal at unity gain and doesn't do anything to the sound at all. A good question might be, what's an op amp? Now it's that triangular thing there and it's got a power supply going to it. So you can just disregard that part of the circuit. All that is is the power supply powering the op amp. But an op amp is just that, is an amplifier and it's got two inputs, a negative input and a positive input. It's actually the inverting and non-inverting input because it will flip the phase. It inverts the polarity of everything that comes in on the minus input. So at the cost of oversimplifying this and completely skipping what's happening with the impedances in the circuit, let's just do a really simplistic overview. The voltage comes in, makes its way down to the low pass filter, and because that capacitor is blocking low frequencies, it doesn't go to ground. Instead, it makes its way into the non-inversing input of the op amp. It then goes out of the op amp's output, and there we go, we have low frequencies coming out of our circuit without any phase rotation. What is that blue line going around? In short, an op amp requires a feedback loop to regulate the gain. If we didn't have a feedback loop there, the gain would go to infinity and our circuit just wouldn't work. But don't worry too much about that. The most important thing is that for low frequencies, because the capacitor blocks the current to ground, it just goes through the non-inverting input and comes out the other side in phase. So what happens now with higher frequencies? Again, this is a tiny bit oversimplified, but because that low pass filter capacitor is now opening up and allowing those frequencies to get sucked away into the ground, it's now a short circuit and that bottom path. So the signal goes across the top path into the inverting input of the op amp and it gets flipped. 180 degrees. Again, we've got the feedback loop happening there to prevent it from going to infinity gain, but you can just ignore that. The important thing is that higher frequencies, because they are sucked away to ground in the bottom path, the top path is free for them to go into the inversing input of the op amp. This has the effect of being an inverting op amp buffer. So it's just amplifying at unity gain, but flipping the polarity. So putting it 180 degrees out of phase. So there you have it. That's how our high frequencies become 180 degrees out of phase and our low frequencies are in phase. And all the while we're hearing all of the frequencies at unity gain at around the cutoff frequency, we're getting more or less or one or the other. And so that's how the phase rotation is happening and the phase shift is happening. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, I make some analog EQ circuits and go into real depth about EQ in my course on EQ called EQ Enlightenment. If you're interested in grabbing my course, I'll give you a 20% discount if you email me and tell me the cutoff frequency of a single pole low pass filter RC circuit with a 20K resistor and a 20K nanofarad capacitor. Using reactants in clever ways is the reason why analog filters exist and analog EQ, but also a whole host of other pieces of studio equipment. Many people might know that phase shifters use all pass filters, but what else can we do with capacitors and this idea of reactants?
When we charge and discharge a capacitor, it takes time, and that time component can be specified using resistors. And if we have a time component, then we can do all sorts of things. We can make compressors now, we can make noise gates, we can make all sorts of things. We can make oscillators, and as we already know, we can make low-pass filters. So if we combine an oscillator with a low-pass filter, we now have a basic subtractive synthesizer. We can make tremolos and BBDs for really cool analog delay effects. Basically, all the cool gear that you find in your studio relies on these basic principles of reactants. So it's incredibly important to understand. So is Dan Wright does phase shift cause EQ? Well, I guess you can say that in specific scenarios, but I would rather say that reactance causes that phase shift which we can use in certain types of EQ. Of course, there's linear phase EQ, which is a different topic for a different video. And it's not like in the digital domain, we chuck away all of the analog electronic circuit knowledge on reactants and all this kind of stuff. No, most of the concepts are one-to-one -one relatable to digital domain stuff, and we just need to tweak it a bit for working in samples rather than working with voltages. But most of the concepts are one-to-one -one relatable. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on reactants. And if you're interested in EQ, I just made a three-part video series debunking the marketing hype around EQ plugins. So make sure to check out those videos, especially the third one, if you're interested in that kind of topic.